Have you found yourself wondering, is there something more? If so, then you, my friend, are a dreamer in waiting. I'd like to welcome you to the Dream On podcast. I'm Julia Gentry, and along with my husband, Travis Gentry, we discuss real, raw, and not small talk conversations about faith, family, entrepreneurship, and all the things that matter most in this life in order to help people bridge the gap between what they currently have and what they really want most. Join us as we give you insights, tools, and strategy to chase every dream that's on the inside of you, but be forewarned. This podcast is not for the faint of heart, but rather those of heart. This is the Dream On Podcast. Podcast episode of Dream On. And today we're actually facing... Episode three. The canyon. So episode two. We weren't. We weren't. We were facing the cave. The cave. And this time we decided to turn the camera around, which was the original intent of the last podcast to give you the view of this canyon, which we love. It's just a great place that we come hiking. It's a great place. Yeah. So we're excited to be at the canyon with you. With yeah. Castlewood. Castlewood Canyon. Pretty prettier view. <laughs> so today's podcast, we are talking about your journey to rethink. Um, in the last episode, we talked just about our journey to rethink. And, um, you know, little did we know back then that it was just going to be the first of many new thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, we wanted to take some time for all of you who go, oh, shoot. I hear what you're saying. I feel like I'm coming up against something that I need to rethink, but I don't know how. I don't know where to start. This proves everything to be wrong. Maybe everything that I didn't ever know is possible could be, and what do I do with it, and all the things that come up. We just thought it would be really fun to do an episode that met you where you're at. Yeah, more more so, and I said on the last podcast, mm-hmm. but just, you know, the how-tos are out there. Yeah. So how to do this. I mean, that's the brilliant thing about YouTube and Google, but it's like, what what are things that have worked for us and the tools and tactics that we have implemented, still practice, and then what does Julia do um, on a daily, weekly basis with you know the, our community um, and the people you've been coaching for quite some time? Yeah. So get a little bit more in the weeds. Let's get in the weeds. Show me. Get in the weeds. <laughs> Where do we start? Where do we start? What would you say has been the most impactful tool tactic Mm -hmm. that you started implementing that now you teach other people but what what is it you'd given the example of coming up with your um your new vision Mm -hmm. how did that come about like what was it and then how can someone else start to unpack that yeah man that was huge for me i think that the precursor to understanding that I had a limitless vision was really understanding that if you have something that is like limitless and there's, there's, you know, there's, there's nothing that's stopping you from doing it and anything is possible. And you, it really is almost like your true North, right? Like your North star of what you could live your life for, Mm -hmm. that there is the opposite side, which is your limiting belief, which you talked about in the last episode too, right? Like when you realize, okay, I am now aware that I am stuck. I am not moving forward. I am stuck. I keep hitting the same wall. I'm running up against the same issues. Like even we said this in the RV, wherever you go, there you are. Doesn't matter who you date. Doesn't matter what diet you try. Doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter what job you have. If you're starting to notice same shit, different day. (laughs) (laughs) It means you You are actually coming with you every single day. (laughs) And your thoughts and your habits. It's like that. So I think that that's really... And it's not, it's not like just limiting beliefs or yeah. a limiting belief. Yeah. It kind of goes down to and you can kind of sum it up. But yeah. there's multiple so kind of layers, layers totally. of multiple limiting beliefs. And then you reinforce it. Yep. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So, so what I have found is that we all of us carry a core limiting belief. And from that core limiting belief, it impacts other areas of our life differently. So we, you know, it's kind of like we call it the live to thrive five. So there's five areas in our life that really we will start to notice that something is not working right or we get stuck in, right? That's either in our mind and spirit, right? It's our health and well-being. It's our finances. It's our career. um, And it's our relationships or our environment. Those are the five areas that typically someone's going to go, I'm stuck. 
right? Like my marriage is not doing what it needs to be doing. My finances aren't working. My career is unfulfilling. You know, my mind is going crazy or my health. I'm not healthy, right? Like pick an area. Let's start there. Yeah. Like what area are you stuck? You have to realize that I'm not getting what I want to be getting in this area of my life. And I think that's the hardest part, Mm -hmm. right? Like, do you remember that time when you just finally have to look at yourself in the mirror and go, this isn't working and I can't blame it on the economy. I can't blame it on my mommy and daddy anymore. I can't blame it on not knowing enough, right? Because you could Google how to almost anything. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, that's literally never happened to me, but (laughs) I've heard it happening to people and being a problem and Mm -hmm. like, yeah, almost every day. Almost every day. Yeah, I mean, it shows up and you look at yourself and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a constant... yeah, it's, it's always there. Yeah. And I think now more that we're more conscious about it, we can say, okay, this is an issue, right? Yeah, but I think I'm triggering for, or I'm this triggering, is showing yes, up. Like we, and you'll probably even watch this. You're like, what do they mean by triggering? And what are like, because we've been talking about this for so many years. Yeah. But I think the first step in your rethink journey, if we could call it that, is you have to understand and acknowledge this isn't working. Like I'm, I'm stuck. And to to the point of, you know, I think Dorian has said this, he's one of our dreamers, right. And our fire starters. And he said, I am aware enough to know that I'm stuck, but I'm not aware enough to understand how to get unstuck. That's Mm -hmm. how you have to, that's where it starts. Knowing that you have a problem. I have a problem. Yeah. Right. It's almost like the 12 steps. in. Yeah. You're an alcoholic or addicted to smoking or food or whatever. Like, okay, enough's enough. I have a problem. I have a problem, let's right? Let's do something about it. So let's pick the area. Okay. Here's my problem, right? I, uh, I'm not where I want to be financially. I, um, my marriage is falling apart. Um, I don't like my career. I can't grow my business. Um, there's a disconnect between me and my kids. I lost my job, you know, like pick the area that mm. you feel stuck. That's where you have to start because then the idea is once you feel stuck, it implies that what got me to where I am is not going to take me to where I need to be. So I'm going mm. to have to hashtag rethink. I'm really trying to, I'm, I'm going to try to make this <laughs> silly, right? Because if we can't make it, yeah, if we yeah. can't make it not so serious, right? It's emotional and we freak out and we feel anger and fear and doubt. And what do we do? We go into fight or flight, right? We yeah. get punchy. We get resistant. We start to grab onto things. And like the minute we do that, I'm not open. You're not open to the conversation because we're starting to take anything and everything way too seriously. And then I'm on guard. Yeah. So one, it's identifying like I have a problem. I have a problem. And then two, it was interesting as you were saying that it was me, 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 I, I, I. Mm-hmm. So I think that there that for me, I was like, OK, that's interesting you know, we call it God and, and what, what we need is we can't do it by our own power no, either. No. So it's not like I, I'm going to do this. Yep. Um, me, myself and I, whatever it is, mm-hmm. it's like, it just doesn't work that way. Okay. So all you willpower people right now that are listening to this and I'm one of them, right? This was my greatest, one of my greatest awakenings in the RV that I talked about. Mm-hmm. If you are a willpower person and you're like, I'm going to figure this out. I will power through this grind, the whole thing. Don't listen. Actually do listen to this part, but be careful. Your ego is not going to like this because in order to go to the next level, I'm, we are firm believers. You have to have God. Like you have to know that yes, row away from the rocks. If you're in a storm, right? Like row away from the rocks, but God is going to meet you. And provide so much grace and so much mercy in ways that you couldn't even comprehend, right? Because now if I'm going to a place I've never been before, more love, more connection, more money, more abundance, more generosity, more anything, that's a new zone. Like that's on heaven on earth that we're starting to bring to this planet that our minds can't comprehend how to do it. So it's almost like going like, I've come to the end of myself. And now I need to, uh, God has to meet me with where I'm at. Yeah. All right. Well, that was episode three. <laughs> and we'll uh, be back next time. No, I mean, it's so true. If you really think about it, it's, it's, we, mm-hmm. we, it's, it's always about how I can handle this situation mm-hmm. or I can do it or, you know, whether you, you smoke or drink or whatever, it's like, I'm going to figure this out and yeah. I, I will make it happen as opposed to like, okay, like, you know, surrender, yes. you know, and understanding like, I have to surrender and let go of something in order to allow space for something new to even come in. Totally. 
which I think, again, when we're in survival mode, which a lot of times when any of these things are happening, it's really easy to shift into survival mode. Mm -hmm. And survival mode means I'm going to protect myself, which is why we go to the I and me. Mm -hmm. I need to protect myself. I need to make sure I'm looking out for myself. I need to grind it out. I, I, I. Yeah. All signs. And then the minute we start going, I need to figure this out, figure it out is a brain that's why we, it cracks me up. Like I will have coaching students actually say, Julie, I just need to figure it out. And I'll go, okay, you go figure that out. Gotta and when, that yeah, ball. but when you get here, come back and let's talk. Yeah. Because the answers are going to start coming from a deeper, more profound, interconnected with God place to take you and lead you to where you've never been. But the I figure it out part, that's not, you, you would have already figured it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no room for God. And so what we're doing is we're minimizing God. We're making our problems bigger and our God smaller. Mm -hmm. We're making the economy bigger and God smaller. Yeah. We're making our bank account bigger and God smaller. Of what is capable. Because if you try to do it on your own, then there is no space for God yep. or other people for too sure. uh, coming sure. alongside you. If you can do it yourself. Yep. And that's where I would also say, like, if, if you can do it by yourself, if your dream mm -hmm. and you can accomplish it by yourself, it's not a God given dream. No, it's really not a dream. It's, yeah. it's, if you want to lose weight, great. I mean, that's, that's yeah. great. And I would imagine that there's probably something else that it's for, yeah. um, for other people, yeah. you know, as you learn how to feed your body right and exercise, I guarantee you're going to share it with other people totally. or you're going to find a passion and love for it to be like, I need to teach this to other people. Totally. So I would challenge yeah. our li listeners to like, yeah. if it, if what you're thinking just has to do with you yeah. and or more, more, just more money yeah. for the sake of more money. It won't. It's not a dream. It's not a God given dream. It's not a God given dream. Right. So I think that, so now as we walk this, so first you have to realize I am stuck, right? I have a problem. I don't know what I don't know. Right. So there's these levels of competency and we're going to provide a couple of links in this podcast and on our web website that you can go and see some visuals, but there's these four levels of consciousness mm -hmm. and competency. And the first one is unconsciously incompetent, which means I don't know what I don't know. Ignorance is bliss. You know what I mean? And that sometimes that's a nice part because it's like, I can complain about it. We can sit around and talk about it all day long and I don't have to take any responsibility and we could just banter back mm -hmm. and forth until you move into consciously incompetent, which is I have a problem, Travis, mm -hmm. and I have no clue what to do about it. Mm -hmm. I now know that I'm not healthy. No idea what I need to do to get healthy. Mm -hmm. I now know that I don't like my career, but I have no idea how to change it. Right? Like nobody likes to be consciously incompetent, which is why we tend to like revert back. Right? We try to play the ignorance is bliss card again because I don't want to be in this phase. I don't like not knowing, but we have to recognize I have a problem. And then the next level is going, okay. And I talk about this in my book is you have to develop a wholehearted hatred for whatever it is. And I don't mean anger. Hatred is different than anger. Anger will get you up in the morning, but it's not going to keep you going all day mm -hmm. long, right? Like anger can get me up. You know, there's so many protests going on right now. And can I just give insight into one that I just saw? We live in Castle Rock, which is a smaller town of Denver. It's getting much bigger than it was. So it's not like the smallest town in the world, but it's a pretty small town. And I'm driving and I, I recognize that down at the, you know, our, the capital in Castle Rock, Downtown. Downtown. Downtown there Cass Rock. Is, downtown Cass Rock. There is a girl who is doing a protest. She's got a mask on, and it was for George Floyd, George Floyd right, all that was going on with that. And P there's probably 50 people that were there doing it with her. And I had this visual of, and you could tell she was angry, and rightfully so. And she is there sharing her protest, and everybody there is in agreement. And I had this concept of, okay, here, let's pretend that here was this girl 60 days prior According to statistics, she doesn't love her job. Relationships are mediocre. Her health is just okay. You know, I'm playing this out statistically speaking. Then all of a sudden, this pandemic happens. This whole this whole episode with um, you know George Floyd happens, and boom, the fire goes on within her. I was born for this. I will not stand for this. Like mm -hmm. that is my mission. And out she goes out the door, right on fire. Like gives me goosebumps thinking about. Like she is alive. Because it's not the first, and keep sharing, but it's not the first incident of this kind no so it's kind of like a few things compounding totally to have her wake up to say 
I'm going to do something. Yes, immediately. That, right? Like, let's just say it's just anger. Okay, so immediately she's like, I'm angry, and I'm going to do something. I'm angry that I lost my job. I'm angry that this is happening, right? Like, I will not stand for this. She gets out there to a protest. She does her thing all day long. My question as I drove away is, will this girl still be doing this in a year? Will she still be taking a stand for the things that are not right? Will she still be standing in front of people and pushing, you know, justice for all color? Will she still be someone in a year that has moved the needle in areas that our world needs to be moved? Or is in a week her anger going to just kind of go away? Here's the difference. Anger will get you up in the morning, will get me doing my protest, will get me yelling, but that's not going to keep me going. I'll burn out back to the point of willpower. My anger will burn out. But if I have a wholehearted hatred, right? Malcolm X says that which I don't hate, I will tolerate. If I don't hate something enough to change it, it won't change. Hmm. And that's the visual that stuck with me, which is great. I'm, anyone can get up in the morning for being angry at anything in their life or anything going on in the world right now. Super for a day. Fair. For a day. <laughs> or two or three or, or two four. Or three. But right, the people yeah. that are gonna create lasting change, not only with what we have going on right now, but in their mm -hmm. health, in your marriage, in your finances, the only thing that will create lasting change is if I take that anger and go wholeheartedly. I hate this. I don't, it's, it's keeping me disconnected from my marriage. It's keeping me from living life in a career that I could like to Travis's point in the last episode, be adding so much value. Like mm -hmm. it's stopping me from health and vitality and I am over it. That's what it takes. It's like a wholehearted hatred that says nothing's going to stop me. I'm going to channel now my connection with God, knowing that it's not just about me. This is bigger than me. It's going to take more than me to get over this addiction, to get over the fear, mm -hmm. to try to push through the consciously incompetent phase. It's going to take all of me, which if it doesn't make you cry, right? Like maybe it's not like there's days that I look at things that I want to do and it almost makes me want to cry because I want to be so good at being a mom, right? Like we talked about this this morning, right? Like those moments that you're like even angry with the kids and you're like, stop. Yeah. I want to be a good mom so bad that I I will stop controlling. And you're getting caught up. Give context to that because I think it's, you know, just being real and, and where where we're at in situations where yeah. it's like we think something else is important, yes. a conversation or – A business uh, call. Or, or, yeah, something really in the grand scheme of things is yep. nothing. Yeah. And you lash out and you get angry and you get frustrated. Yep. And, and I would totally agree. Looking at their face when you lash out has nothing to do with them, but their interpretation and everything um, is, yeah, heartbreaking totally. to, to know. Okay, so coming back to what you were saying, yeah. first is recognizing there's something disconnected. Yep, yep, I'm stuck. Two, two is I need to allow space for this. Yes. To rethink it. Yes. Three is I, I have to dislike how I acted so much, so much that I am going to make a change. Yes. So when a situation like that comes up again, yep. one, you may not be perfect. Yep. You may lash out. Totally. But here's the difference that I know that we both have done. Yep. And I'm, I'm challenging everybody to do as you get through these phases yeah. or these steps is that you go back to the kids yeah. if you lash out. And in this example, and you go back to them. And, and I we and I did this too. And you go back to them and you sit with them, you get eye level with them and you let them know that it has nothing to do with them, yes. that you're sorry. Yep. Um, and so they understand and, and recognize one, it's okay to be vulnerable and be wrong. For sure. Two, Which I think as a parent is sometimes the hardest thing to do. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I've never rarely, if ever have seen a parent lash out at a kid, yep. at, you know, out in public and then apologize to him. Totally. Cause so it was I their, think it's, it it's fault. so yep. important. And this is practice on such a, you know, a little level. It's like with a, a kid, do you have to apologize? No, absolutely. I mean, you don't have, you to, don't have to, but as you're aware consciously yeah. yep. becoming consciously competent yep. in different areas, you, you have to. Yes. Like, I can't just go throughout my day without going back to him and saying, look, I'm really sorry. I lashed out. It had nothing to do with you. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's it's teaching them and helping them, but it's also helping totally. us. Because it's almost, re this is what happens, is that the ego in me doesn't want to sit down and acknowledge my error. Mm -hmm. Right? The ego in me wants to be the mom who's right 
and you're the kid who's wrong, right? Like I, I put battle that. And so in my head, what I'm doing is it's almost like I'm sitting down and mm-hmm. not only is this for the, in this specific instance for Nixon, not only is this to show Nixon that a mommy and a woman and an adult can be wrong. Anyone can be wrong. We're allowed to be wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. And to show so much empathy and grace. And then to say, to show him, to say that sorry is a powerful word, but sorry is powerful because it means change. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. And I'm like rewriting my code of my DNA because my ego doesn't like it, but I'm doing it anyways. I'm mm -hmm. consciously saying, here's what I did. Here's why it was wrong. Here's how I want to do it moving forward. This is how you, this is it. So if we keep going, this is how you start to rethink is that now this is where this, this is going to be a little much, but your thoughts teach your brain what to think. This is how this works is I have a thought that writes my brain code, right? So I have a thought that's going to go... Uh, I can't have what I want. Then my brain's going to tell my thoughts, I can't have what I want. Mm -hmm. So now it's just becoming this self-fulfilling prophecy. So the hardest part about this is that we've had so many thoughts that have told our brain to think a certain way that we just keep doing it automatically. So in these moments, in this moment, I remember sitting down with Nixon going, hey, baby, you are more important than anything else. You are more important than this business call. You are more important than even my agenda. You are more important than my control issues. I'm saying this. He's three, y'all. Like he's probably looking it's like, at it's me like going. Pra- practicing. And there's two th- quick thoughts before I lose them. <laughs> is one is having grace for yourself. Yes. Um, Which we could all use more of. Yeah. And knowing it doesn't always happen because it's easy. You could have got mad at him and be like, well, next time. Yes. I know that we both, and we've had multiple conversations where we're at that level where I will, f- I'm gonna respond how I know I don't want to, so mm-hmm. I stop it before it happens. Yeah. Sometimes it slips, and so this is what we're talking about yeah. in this situation. You going back, apologizing, um, getting it right with you, yep. um, but it's so easy to lash out at the people you love, yeah, because you wouldn't have done that to the person that you're talking to, yeah. You totally. know, if they kept talking, you're like, hey, listen, hold on, I'm on the phone, okay. <laughs> Go away. I'll be back in a minute. Hey, you know, and then talk to talk to the kids. So it's like practicing. But the people you love the most typically are the ones that you lash out and and sometimes hurt the most. And including yourself. Oh, how many thoughts we have, how often we shame ourselves, how often we guilt (laughs) ourselves unconsciously or consciously. Right. We kill ourselves. Mm -hmm. We kill ourselves. Right. And then we kill those around us. Right. Because at some point you're like, I got to put this somewhere. Yeah. Right. I got to put my shame and my guilt somewhere. And so when we start this rethink process, people think, well, it's just this some like crazy mantra. No, there's a reason that even the Bible, it says renew your mind daily. Yeah. Right. It's not it's not like, oh, but so many of us are like, it works so well. I stopped doing it. No. Renew your mind daily, because what you're doing is you're reinforcing your brain to tell your thoughts to think another way. So it's like when you get so, when you slow down and get so granular that you're literally watching a thought, a new thought, Nixon, you are more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. Nixon, you are more important than my control issues. I wasn't saying that for Nixon, though it's going to serve him at some point. He's going to understand he's three. He doesn't understand it at an intellectual level like I do. I was saying it for me because I'm reestablishing in my brain order. Work does not come before my kids. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Like phone calls don't come before my kids. Sure. I understand that there's going to be certain times that there's meetings. But if if my work and the people around me don't realize that I have kids and that they can't hang for five minutes on a call while I just get situated or whatever, Mm -hmm. I don't care. They're more important to me. Yeah. But that isn't how it's always been. Right. Setting the expectations for the people around you, too. Totally. So they understand priority of importance. And and, and there again, the person on the phone wouldn't doesn't care. Totally. You know, you make it mean something. Totally. You know, and and that's something maybe if we can hit on a little bit is just that comparison. Yeah. So I think on a, you know, as you grow up and you, you, you model and you compare yourself to situations and now with YouTube and everything that's, you know, that you have access to movies, you compare yourself. Yeah. And that's, to me, that's, that's been hard for me sometimes. Yeah. Where it's like you compare yourself and so we've started to stop the podcast because we have to make it be perfect yeah. or you judge yourself yeah. and so you limit yourself by what you think it needs to be as yeah. opposed to just being knowing that whatever I'm being and how I'm saying it is yeah. how it's supposed to 
happen. Totally. So, okay, so let's keep walking down this path because, you know, we I'm writing this book, The ABCs of Dreaming, for kids and adults so that now families can start interacting with this concept at, at a much simpler level. Mm -hmm. And so there's always a hero, like there's an arc enemy in every single story, right? Like we always love the hero because we love the arc enemy because he's trying to beat the other one. But the, the goal of both is to win at the end. That's the goal. So the arc enemy in the story would be comparison to your mm -hmm. point. Well, the hero of the story is creation. So if I'm comparing, I can't create, which mm -hmm. we just talked about this in the last episode, right? Like I can't change my reality if I can't create something new. Well, if I'm stuck in comparison and looking over my fence at what my neighbor has or looking at what I quote unquote should have or looking at what I used to have, right? Then there is no space for me to create something new. So in order to start to change your thought process, you have to wake up to a consciousness and start as simple and yet profound as going, here's the thought I have in this moment, which is, I'll go back to my example with Nixon. I'm out of control. Consciously, I'm like, I'm feeling angry. So why my anger didn't just show up on scene. It's not just because Nixon's not listening. That's mm -hmm. not why I'm angry. People think this. That's not why I'm angry. I'm angry because I feel like I'm out of control. Okay, so now I have to go, okay, I have to create a new thought here that's going to serve me, that's not going to give me anger, but it's going to give me surrender, which is something that like, we are all important, right? Yeah. Or I am safe, or um, nothing is more important than this, than this moment, right? Like, I have to create space to grab a new thought that's going to serve my emotions and start moving me in a new direction. But if I'm comparing right? If I'm looking at something else or someone else, all I'm going to do is create a duplicate in the world. Mm -hmm. We don't need any more duplicates, mm -hmm. right? If someone tries to do our marriage, guess what? It's our, we're well, then it. there's a rub. There's that <laughs> because you're being inauthentic totally. to yourself yes. and truly who you were designed and meant to be. Yep. And that's where there's then frustration totally. and resentment and everything else that comes along with that, yep. where it's like, if I can't walk out and be true and authentic to myself, and I'm a copycat yes. and I'm modeling someone, I'm yep. faking it. Yep. And those emotions come up and sabotage you. And it's like, totally. Now I'm trying to do even again, and I appreciate mentors. We've had tons of them. I appreciate coaches. We have tons of them, right? Like people would call me a growth coach, but if they're trying to be me, if we're trying, we've done this, we've tried mm -hmm. to be them and tell right? them what they should think. Yeah. Or, or I'm saying like, remember the one we bought a real estate course and we were trying to do it exactly like them and we were frustrated. It wasn't working, mm -hmm. right? Like it, we were, we were modeling it to so much that we were losing our own voices. We were losing our own way. So mm -hmm. it's almost like it's okay to look around and go, okay, what are, what are people doing? But if it doesn't come through my lens of creation, if it doesn't come through the lens of Travis Gentry, Julia Gentry, us as a couple, it's, it's, it's going to be awful. There's going to be that rub because it's not in alignment. Yeah. I'm just copycatting. I'm not creating or yeah. adding to in it. In certain situations. I believe that there's certain situations where, you know, A plus B equals C every single time. Like, can you give me an example? Financially. Okay. If you do this and you do it consistently and you do this, like there's a formula okay. to success too. Okay. So Fair. if you try to take yourself out and I've seen this happen on the flip side of real estate too, yep. where you try, you, you're like, okay, I hear everything you're saying, but I'm going to do it this way or yep. fitness. Let's say that's a better, or could be a better example of, okay, I, I, I hear that you train, you know, professional athletes yep. um, and you give me this workout and you said, if I do this and I eat this way, I'm going to get these results. Yep. I hear you, but I'm going to do this, this, and this and not work out on this day and do this. Yes. You will not get the same results. Yep that were given to you yep. by the person that has the formula to yes. do it. So I agree, but then let's look at it this way. You have to also, I remember this too, uh, Jesse Itzler, do you remember this? Mm -hmm. He had, He's a huge proponent of only eating fruit until noon, mm -hmm. okay? So I was like, oh, I'm gonna try this. Cause this bananas, is what, wasn't it? Any kind of fruit, but a lot of times it's bananas, but okay. any kind of fruit, okay? So I was like, that makes so much sense. This is before we found out intermittent fasting. That makes so much sense. I'm going to eat fruit before noon. You said to me, Julia, that is so much sugar. Like it's good sugar, but that is so much sugar. And I was like, yeah, but Jesse Itzler's doing it. And you're like, he runs a marathon like every single day. Exaggerate, but yeah, run, I mean, he this, runs a lot. He is running. That's what he does. He is running. So here's what I'm doing. I'm comparing myself to him. Then I'm trying to take his tool. His tool works 
for someone who is that's what their goal is. Yeah, exactly. The results that he wants, he needs that fuel to run. Yes. If you want to be a professional athlete and they tell you to work out a certain way because yes. you need a certain, you know, uh, strength, you need to weigh a certain amount. Yep. You have to do those things. Yes. But I don't. It's like Jesse Itzler doing the bodybuilding workout totally. and trying to run. Totally, totally. And so I think the, what we're trying to get at is there has to be what we're looking for in all of this is alignment. Mm -hmm. That's the best word that I could use. OK, so if my result is that I want to be, you know, in the NFL, if my result is I want to run a marathon, if my result is I want passion in my relationship, if my result is that I want ten thousand dollars passive income, if my whatever my dream is, whatever my result is, then I can start looking around at what people who have done it are doing, mm -hmm. then I need to pull it in. I need to make sure that it's in alignment with actual truth, not cognitive like, well, but I've always done it this way mm -hmm. before. No, it should blow your mind. When you first pull it in, it should blow your mind. Like, what? Yeah. Like, it could be that simple. It might be that easy. It could be that hard, right? Like, yeah. but it's going to blow your mind at first. Then you have to create the space to leverage God, right? Leverage that some, he's got to meet me on this. Then it's about rewiring your brain to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then it's about creating it in the way you're the only, let's say, you're the only Travis Gentry who's going to take the field as an F NFL player. Mm -hmm. I'm the only Julia Gentry that's going to go run this marathon like this. Mm -hmm. Then I have to get in alignment with myself and make sure that I'm doing it for the right reasons. That's where the freedom's going to come. Yeah. That's where the transformation's going to come. So, yes, it could get a little muddled right there. But the filtering system, what we're looking for is alignment freedom flow for, intuition for you yeah no and i totally agree i mean it's with anything you look at there's certain people that have god given natural abilities totally there's six 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 nine yeah seven foot <laughs> yeah the likelihood of them being a basketball player mm -hmm. um, or a football player is Should the desire be there yeah, yeah. and the athletic ability back yeah. it up yep. to a certain level is higher, yes. way higher. Yes. And so I think it's, yes, it's the an alignment are, yes. of saying, okay, here's, here's who, here's what I know I'm capable of mm -hmm. and what, yes, I need to get stronger or eat better or change this habit. Yep. And so now I need to align myself with how am I going to do that? Yep. Cause like just in real estate, there's a bunch of ways to make money in real estate. Totally. There's a lot of different vehicles. Yep. And so what you're saying is the vehicle that we were looking at was not the vehicle. No. Yes, you can make a lot of money Correct. doing that vehicle, yep. but it was not in alignment with yes. me. Yes. And I remember the day that he even said this model, this was after we had already invested in it. And mm -hmm. he was like, this model is really good for someone who's systems and detail oriented, wants to kind of work for, on a computer, Just push, paper. push paper. And I looked at Travis and he looked at me and we were like, <laughs> this Didn't is not going to be like none of those diligence. words would describe if you know Travis like details literally kill my soul <laughs> Travis is not a computer guy and so again misalignment because it was like we wanted the results yeah. right we wanted the cash flow but that wasn't our journey that wasn't yeah. our lane that wasn't that wasn't our path so and so, so where could you see that showing up you know career uh -huh. um, fitness and health yep because there's different ways to get the results that you want making sure you're in alignment yep um, where else could you see that? I mean, in any area, right? Like it's, it's that, it, th those are the five that I had mentioned earlier when but you more prevalent, don't you think with, you know, kids yeah. and how you interact with kids and being a parent, there's certain things that everybody can do yeah. to a certain level. Yeah. And then there's, you could add on to it with, you know, even yep. more alignment, but there's kind of a base. So are you saying like real time, this is happening? What do you do? Oh, I'm saying, um, is there any situation from from your perspective that you've seen that there's not some fundamentals in different areas of your life and then there's some that are true alignment like what we just talked about mm -hmm. you know in your career mm -hmm. if you if you're a if you love to sit at a cubicle and you love uh, crunching numbers and coding yep starting a business is probably not for you potentially sure. unless you align yourself with the right people right. that can do the other things yep. your you if your alignment with yourself it may be to come alongside a company that they need that skill set yep. so you can thrive in 
the you know work environment yeah. and your God given abilities. I think I think before you can even get there. So again, I I really appreciated in the last episode you ended with the how tos are out there. This is not going to be about how tos, okay? Mm-hmm. And when people have come to coach with me, it's almost six months before we touch like real time decisions, because if you come to sit down in a process. And for 33 years, 38 years, 44 Mm -hmm. years, even 18 years, you've been thinking one way. And then just to think with one new thought that we happen to come up with that you're going to walk away and start building your life from that, you're crazy, Mm -hmm. right? Because I've been working 33 years. Remember, I am wrong subconsciously. My limited belief, I am wrong. I can't have what I want. I'm not worthy. I can't trust anyone. And so I've built my life around that. Michael Singer talks about this in the book, Untethered Soul changed my life i loved that book Mm -hmm. first couple chapters i couldn't quite get into it chapter three you're like the heavens open up okay what he's talking about is it's like we all have this thorn in our side which would be called a limiting belief which that's what we call when we walk people through this i have this belief it's in my side and so instead of taking it out right because if we take it out then i'm i don't uh, what am I going to do without it? That's why they say an addict is way more likely to go back to their addiction, not because they want to, but because they don't know what to do with that space, right? So if I drink alcohol every day from five to 10, that's five hours every day. That I need something. That that fill. now if I stop <laughs> drinking, right, that's step one. Yeah. But then what am I going to do with those five hours every That is a lot of time. That feels vulnerable. That feels scary. There's so much uncertainty, Right. Like, I don't know what to do. I know that I don't want to drink again, but I know what I'm going to feel like when I do. Even if it's awful, I -hmm. still know what I'm going to feel like. Yeah. Right. So part of this is that, okay, if I take this out of my life, I don't know. I I have no idea what's next, which is why we don't, because I don't know what a loving relationship is going to feel like. I didn't have one. I've never seen one. I don't know what it feels like to be in a community of other people working towards a common goal. I've never done that. before. Yeah. Yep. You know so, what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. Part so of it's this... kind of the 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 awareness, the open space, the alignment to then start to fill sh- it again. Fill it. So then you can take out that yep. thorn yes. to then put something else in. Yes. And you may have to take it out a couple of times to you put do, something yes. else in because you're like trying to really find yep. what feels good, what fits, what's an alignment yes. with now that new yep. awareness. And, new and thought, psychology new calls this liminal space. So when you go from consciously incompetent, I have a problem and I hate it and I'm ready to move forward, I let go. Trapeze mm-hmm. moment, right? I let go. The the space between letting go and grabbing on to the next thing, right? A limitless vision, right? Something to live for, my mm-hmm. conviction, my purpose. That space in between is treacherous. It's dangerous, right? And it's liminal space because it feels, and I just got an email about this last night. He says, I feel like I'm floating. I don't know where I, like I'm here, but I'm not here. He's like, I almost feel like I just want to go back because this space is quiet. Mm -hmm. He goes, my mind has been shattering for 40 years and now my mind is quiet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's almost feels scary. It feels empty. That's liminal space, which is now I'm letting go of everything I've ever known. And I haven't quite yet grabbed on to this whole idea that I can create uninhibitedly, that I can live in a world as far as the eye can see that there's possibility and potential and room for my gift, haven't grabbed onto it yet. So this is the, the space in between that I believe this is where you learn to be. Yeah, no, we've practiced that and it's, it's hard. And we've talked about this too, where m- most people, and we've been there in different seasons of our life, is I would, lever, I would rather live in a comfortable hell than yep. an unfamiliar heaven. Yes. And yes. understanding, like, I can control this. It's familiar, even though I hate it. And that shows up in all areas totally. with some people. Totally. A, a relationship that's bad, you're like, at least I know what I get. At least I know what I'm going to get. a hole. Yep. And at least I saw, you know, my mom, did. she was in bad Yeah, it's kind of and... like, I've seen this modeled for me. I'm in yep. it. Yep. So, but to think about, I could have truly what I want. Yep. Or I haven't even thought about it yes. because I, I haven't allowed myself to totally. transition into the liminal space. Yep. Um, and so the liminal space is really there and designed to create. If I go back to comparison, if I go back to what used to be, if I go back to what my neighbor's doing, if I go just get on YouTube, liminal space is when I tell people, get off YouTube. Get off YouTube. Stop watching other people's life. Do not get on Instagram. Do not get on Facebook. Because guess what you're going to do? You are way too weak 
right? It's almost like that alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I've watched people walk through this journey where when they stop drinking, you don't go to the bar two days later. You're not strong enough. Then here's what we do. We shame ourselves. I should be strong enough. See, I told I told you I couldn't do this. Go to the bar to sit there or yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, like just be like, around just it. Just be in around that it. You're like they, then they're like, Well, I can't even do that. You're like, you're two days in. You're two years even in, right? Yeah. Like until all of a sudden it becomes stronger and stronger. So you're supposed to in the liminal space, you're supposed to detach from all the other stuff around you because you're supposed to learn how to go in. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to learn how to go to God. You're supposed to learn, okay, God, show me what is possible. Here's my limit. My limit has always told me I am wrong or I can't have what I want. What does truth say? Yeah. Right? Like what is actual truth that says anything is possible for him who believes, right? That, that, that I am more than a conqueror. It says that anywhere I put my foot that you will give me the land in your namesake, right? Like there's biblical principles that when we finally decide to let go of a mindset that isn't serving us and you know it's not serving you when you're not getting the results you want, period. And then you start going, okay, let's just for a second in this liminal space, consider a world that anything was possible. Let me for a minute create uninhibitedly like what's possible. And all of a sudden, you're, this part of you starts to open up again and you go, oh man, like I can see it. I can taste even a little bit of it. And oh man. And then all of a sudden your brain goes, yeah, but what about this? And what about that? And what about mm -hmm. this? And what about her? And what about him? And what are they gonna think? That's the chatter of the mind. Right, that's par for the course because this liminal space is trying to chip away at that. Right, that's the addict that's going. Wait, 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 wait. So now going from liminal space to now consciously competent. Yeah, uh -huh. getting into that next level, next phase. Yep. What is that kind of transition? Yeah. So, so in this space, you have to learn how. So there's three layers to this, like what I call almost our prayer meditation. It's the chatter layer the constructive layer and the creation layer. So if you were to sit down and do meditation, and I remember this was on a podcast and I can't remember who it was, but it changed everything. I'll even put the link in this because I loved this podcast. It's on impact theory. But he said, I'd been trying to meditate for a long time and I hate meditating because I hate being still, right? I need to be mm -hmm. doing, something. doing something. This yeah. isn't, you know, I'm not profiting anything. And like, there's a million things I could be doing and my mind was going crazy. And he said, the, the goal of meditating is not to be good at meditating. The goal of meditating is to be good at you. And, and train I, your mind to. Oh, I like, I was on an airplane and I was like, Okay, hello. There it was. Like, I know who it was. I can't do, think of his you know, name. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was like the light went on, right? Yep. Though that's what yeah. you're looking for. All of a sudden, revelation's going to go. Truth will go, boom. It's like an explosion goes off within you. Okay, so the chatter layer when you first are in this liminal space is going to be everything that you're not. It's going to sound like shame, guilt, judgment, criticism. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Five, fifteen minutes. It's going to chatter, 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 chatter when you do this. Once that quiets itself, because it will. Then you go to what I call the constructive layer. And I pull out a pen and paper for this. It'll say, oh, you forgot to call your mother-in-law. Oh, you forgot to send that thank you. Oh, you forgot to, you wanted to post something. The to-dos. That's the to-dos. But they're valid. They're super constructive because I just forgot. And so I write them. And I write them until it too stops. And it will. Then I get to the creation layer. And this is where almost, again, it's quiet, which is weird at first. Even if we stop talking right now. I think they say five seconds on an elevator. People can't stand the I uncomfortability. Was say I know. People can't stand the, the awkward <laughs> yeah. five seconds that at about five, six seconds, someone will say something totally. because it's awkward. Normally, I just get on the elevator and just Bart. stand and stare <laughs> at the person just to see the reaction. Who's going to break so first? So, watch. <laughs> That's five seconds, doesn't that? I mean, even oh, listeners, are like, hey, listeners are like, did they just, is, is like, you just looked at done. your podcast, right? Because five seconds of yeah. quiet can feel like an eternity. So, Part of this is learning to sit in the quiet. Then here's what's going to happen. When you're really seeking truth, and you're going to have to check yourself on this, you could start with God's word. You could start with a thought that just trumps the other one, right? So if I have a limiting belief or this belief that keeps coming up that says I can't have what I want, mm -hmm. what would just be a belief that, or an, the opposite, if we flip that thing over? If it's in me, it's possible. Grab it, right? If Do mine you is find I, within that process, if you don't have the thoughts mm -hmm. or the you know, the friends and family around mm -hmm. you, you don't have anybody, mm -hmm. whether it's a book or a mm -hmm. very specific podcast or an article to help you come up with some ideas yeah. to be able to like, okay, are, can I have those as my new truth? Sure. So a couple of things. Yes. Uh, in this phase, there's something beautiful about just trusting that it's already in you. It's a, it's going to pop up. Like it's you're going to be you. still sitting there 
potentially not the first time. Yes, not the second the first time, time the third or fourth. Yes. But then you start to have these dreams yep. start to come back up because you had them in the past yep. and you buried them or put them yes. on the shelf. And now they start to come up and you're like, oh, I do remember that. Yes. And here's what I will say. God doesn't talk in English or Spanish or Portuguese. God talks in colors and energies and like stories. And like, so sometimes when you're in the zone, all of a sudden, like I'll get this energy of freedom. This is how I landed on my word freedom, right? It was like this, it was almost like this yellow color, right? That all of a sudden I just felt open and the, the word all of a sudden free. And I sat there, I went, that's what I want, right? Cause I had been listening to a couple other podcasts. I'd been reading a couple yeah. other books and I was almost envious, right? Cause I was comparing like, they live so free. Why is it that they live free? I want to be her. Yeah. I started doing this. I want to be her. And so I was like, I was like rumbling with that for like a week until I finally went to this quiet place and I asked myself and the word free. And I was like, I don't want to be her. I want to be free like her. Yeah. So, so what yeah. will happen is all of a sudden, even if a word comes to you, it's likely your word. It's likely, oh, that is what I want more than anything. I want freedom. And then you start putting these together. And then all of a sudden, like, remember my book, the whole idea that the lights went across the sky, like shooting stars, and there was color as far as the eye could see. It was like creation, totally uninhibited creation. There was no right or wrong. There was no rhyme or reason. And all of a sudden, you're like, that's what I want. So it's, yeah. Being, so being still. Yes. And I've had these too. Uh, I know. And it's so hard because mm -hmm. I, you know, whether I'm hiking or out in you know, by the beach or the ocean yep. or in nature, yep. I get a lot of like mm -hmm. downloads when I'm doing that. Yep. And it's so hard to disconnect yourself Yeah. in the environment that we live in now yes, with totally. the phone. You can call, you can text, you can multitask while you're, you know, you can be eating, texting and driving. Yep. And when you get to the office, you can be watching two different screens. Yep. You can be texting something and, yep. and eating or like, there's so many times, like, we're plugged in all the time. To be, or check your phone. Yes. Like, and I, I forget the stats and statistics, but how many people check their phones, whether it beeps or doesn't, yes. it's just kind of a compulsive thing. But especially when there's a little ding. Totally. And they did that intentionally. Totally. So you're like addicted to checking your phone. Like it's so urgent or important yep. because if it was, they would pick up the phone and call you. For sure. You know, but you feel like, oh, I got to, I got to get back to them. They yep. just sent me an email. I gotta get, I've got to yes. get back to them. It's totally. urgent. And so then you get distracted by the quiet time yes. or being in the liminal space or being open or even listening to totally a podcast yes that helps you start to rethink yes so here's what i'm going to say because i think that there could even be two parts to this right and maybe we do one more on this after this episode to go even deeper um but here's what i would encourage people listening to this right now is you have to remember that the journey of rethinking is that you have to be willing to do what you've never done to get the results that you've never had Okay. So if you've been plugging in, you probably need to unplug, right? If you haven't been doing a date night, you probably need to do a date. Like you're going to almost need to do the opposite or subtly shift, something right? Different. Something that's going to be different than what you're currently doing. And so typically what I'm trying for the alignment piece, cause you can do what someone else is doing. And I'm not suggesting that it won't work. We just want to find what's in you to do it the way that only you can do it, to find your revelation, to find your new thought, because again, you can learn from my lesson or you can learn from your lesson. Both are valid, but I've found that oftentimes we really learn when we learn our own lesson, which some of the most creative businesses and companies, Tesla, yep. you know, they, yep. they recreating yep. and doing something new. Tom's shoes, when he came out with his shoes, it's I know he got way. rejected multiple times, yep. you know, so it's like processing, um, I believe the, the protein bar, yeah. um, when they first started doing it because they wanted to do it a certain way. Yeah. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the protein bar. Oh, Tom by uh, you. Yep. Um, quest quest nutrition. So, you know, uh, love love his stuff and it was a no sugar bar it was the first no sugar bar to the market wasn't it yeah so the way they were trying to do it there was no machines out there yep. and so they had to rethink yep. and create a machine at first they were doing it by hand yes. and then they got a machine built and so yes. they could mass produce it yep. so you're yeah absolutely you have to step back and yes. not necessarily and always in. do yes. it yep. the way someone else is doing but take that because i think that there's there's clues yes. of like, oh, I like this, I like this, but I don't, I'm not seeing the translation from this to this, so I need to do yes. something different. And so here's what I would end on is part of this is now going in, 
you always have to go in because it's the God in you that put the answers to any of the problems in the world going on around us, even the areas that you're stuck in. You have the answer on the inside of you. It's not on the outside of you. Mm -hmm. It's not Googling or researching. Yes, start there. Sure, that could be fine. But then you have to go in because it's the God in you that gave me the answers to that problem. But if I just keep trying to solve it externally, 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 then I'm, I'm detaching from myself more and more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. I'm in how to's, but I'm not changing from the inside out. Yep. So part of this and what I would encourage a for a couple steps and then we'll shift into another episode, we can go deeper, but is to say, gotta acknowledge that there's an issue, right? Yep. I'm stuck. Then you have to create the space to, to give God room to meet you halfway, right? Like surrender. There has to be a surrender to, this is not willpower. I'm not going to do this on my own. God, community, people are going to have to help. Then the next is learning how to l identify really what the thing is that's keeping you stuck and to learn how to let it go. Then it's walking through the liminal space and starting to go in. You have to be able to go, great, this is what's got me to where I am. What now is going to be the revelation and the truth that's going to get me to go where I want to be, which is that limitless vision, which is uh, conviction, which is purpose, which is dreams. Right to now finally grab onto something so I can swing the other side. Having the dream then now become tangible it. reality. Which is a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, that, the, but I think that's the process that's the of process. like that's the whole point of like yep. the the reason why you want to go through this process and you can go through it in a bunch of different areas of your life, which there'll be a download on our website that you can get that will help you kind of walk through this process of what we're talking about. And you can add it, whether it's health and nutrition or yeah. career. Yep. And so you can write down and then be still. But that's why it's it's so important. And it's action based though too. Totally. It's not just, okay, here's the how to's. You have to put in the work. Yep to get the result that you want, which is the dream that's inside you. Yes. Well, let's just dedicate the next episode is going to be towards the action oriented side of things, right? Because I think that's why sometimes dreaming gets a bad connotation because they're like, while you're over, this is used to be mine. While you're over there dreaming, I'll be out here doing I'm something. Do. Right. Do, do, and do. so I used to just judge because dreamers felt like woo woo or just so emotional or, oh, it must be nice or pie in the sky or whatever. No, dreamers are doers big time, right? Like that's the connection piece. But I think before we start doing, that's not our issue as people, right? Before we start doing, I think there's an essence of learning how to be, learning how to rewrite our thoughts, learning how to change our, some of our beliefs and, and then knowing what to do about it. Yep. But those would be my steps. Those, those would be my suggestion on beginning the steps of learning how to rethink as taking every opportunity and going, if this is energetically is not serving me, if this thought is creating shame, anger, blame, guilt, right? Like it doesn't sit it's well not with sitting me. well with me. I feel me. like I'm being in tr trying to be someone or do it the way they're doing totally. it. Totally. That is an opportunity to go rethink moment. That's all I want you to do. Hashtag go rethink, right? Like you may be consciously incompetent, but you are conscious, right? Because even an hour ago before listening to this podcast, you might have said, oh, I didn't even know those moments were happening. Now you'll notice that they're happening, but you're gonna have to listen to more episodes and join us for <laughs> all the things, right? But now when you're conscious about it, you're at least going, oh, at least I'm seeing it. Yeah. You, right? Well, you start to and, see and it. And then you got to hate it enough. You got to go, oh, there it is again. Yeah. There it is again. Shoot. There it is again. Oh my gosh. It's everywhere. And now you go, I hate it. Yeah. Great. That is where you need to be. You got to hate it. And that's when you really start to get the results, lasting results. Yeah. Not just the, you know, 90 days, first of the year, went to the gym, mm -hmm. you know, lost a few pounds, but didn't really create pattern and habit and really at a, a deeper level totally. to understand like, why do I want to be in shape? Yep. Not just to be For in sure. shape because that person's in shape yep. and they look good at the beach. You know, why do I yeah. want to get in the shape? Because the willpower runs out. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. Good. We could sit and talk even longer. <laughs> Join us for another episode is really what we need to be saying. <laughs> yes. We'll see you next time. On behalf of both of us, thank you for listening to another episode of Dream On. Don't forget to visit our website, The Dream Factory and Co. for all the show notes and other tools and resources to get you unstuck, clear, and helping you reprogram your thoughts and beliefs so that you can live out your dreams with a community that supports and challenges you. Until next time, dream on.